Bing, bang, boom, the witch is dead, the witch is dead. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sava Tech once again. Today, I have yet another how-to video. Today, we are going to be taking a look at Simple Mining OS and how to install it, how to start mining with it, and how to manage your rigs from within the web GUI. Now, this is a paid video. Simple Mining thinks for going ahead and helping supplement the YouTube income with some additional sponsorship. I appreciate it a lot. If you guys want to use my referral link, that would be preferred so they can help track who has signed up for Simple Mining through that link in the description. And that would be awesome of you guys to do. Now, I do want to clarify that I have used Simple Mining in the past and we have other how-to videos. So this works out pretty good because we're gonna be able to an up-to-date 2021 guide for it. And I have used the OS in the past and it has worked well. Now, in addition to that, I do want to also say that Simple Mining OS is currently the only option for mining on RX 6800s for a solution like this, which is awesome too. However, it is in beta, but I have been testing it out on my test bench with two 6000 series cards from AMD or from Radeon and it's been working pretty well. So I'm super excited to announce that because now I can get some more 6000 series cards up and running without interfering with my 5000 series or 580 cards, which is pretty cool. All right, so today what we're gonna cover is essentially setting up a two-factor authentication account, setting up your simple mining account and setting up the miner itself. We will not be covering wallets in this video. And if you want to figure out what wallet you want to use or so on, you can watch some of my other videos on this channel. And if you need how to's, you let me know, but I do have some issues with doing how to's for Coinbase and crypto.com and so on, because obviously the privacy concerns involved with that. Without further ado, let's hop into the guide and kaboom, shabooty, we're in. All right, so here's Authy. We'll be using that for our two factor. But for now, what we're going to take a look at is simple mining. We're going to need to create an account so you can come up here to the top right and click the register button. Okay, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and get signed up. One of the things I always mentioned that I would prefer you do is randomly generate a password. You can do this with LastPass, Dashlane, any password manager, or worst case, you can always go to random.org and you can go down to the password generator and click get passwords. So this is a great option if you don't want to use a password manager. Another thing about this is I never recommend saving passwords to any browsers. It's not a good idea. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and click register and an activation link is gonna be sent to our email. Now, luckily I have spun up this little email to get going on. Let's check our junk. All right, it did end up in the junk mail. So if you're having issues, make sure you go ahead and go to your junk mail and then click the link. And if the link doesn't work, do a control C and a control V into the browser. There we go. So at this point, it will say, please fill the default wallet address. And this will pre-fill your configs with the wallet address. So this is where you'll put your Ethereum wallet address in. You can go ahead and look up wherever you like to get that, you know, your Coinbase account, your crypto.com account, your MetaMask account, whatever it may be at the time. So for this example, I'm gonna go ahead and open my Brave browser and we had that MetaMask wallet that we set up for you guys the other day. And it's nice to see that somebody did get the crypto out of it. So congratulations to who, whoever did pull that off. And all right, so now we have entered the Ethereum wallet address and we are just gonna go ahead and click save and reload all rigs. There are no rigs in here. So the next step is going to be setting that up, but let's talk about two-factor authentication real quick. With the account, you'll click at the top right and then click account settings. And at this point you will click the password 2FA option. And then over here, it will have a two-factor authentication option we are going to enable it to do that we are going to go ahead and use authy today so this will be authy.com and linked in the description and we're going to go ahead and download it for the windows 64 bit and then we are going to go ahead and run it at this point it will ask for a phone number so if you want to use whatever phone number you have to tie to it just go ahead and get that plugged in 
I will make the screen blank here real quick so that I don't have any privacy concerns. Or you can just look at my beautiful face while I do it. Once you've entered your phone number, it will request that you enter an email as well. And then it will request to send an SMS message to that phone number. So you also have to go through with that. And it's the same as signing up for anything else. Basically, you will just need to type in that additional step. Back to the screen. And we are just going to close this out and we are gonna go back to our simple mining and we have our Authy here. So we're gonna go ahead and click add account. It will ask for the code. And the code is right here. It's gonna be labeled as the secret key. So you'll highlight it and press control C. Go back to Authy and do a control V and add the account. We're just gonna go ahead and name it simple OS and then save, then click the little copy the clipboard button in Authy, and then do a control V into the authenticator and press enable 2FA. At this point we have 2F factor authentication enabled. We also have of course the OS set up with our account. If you guys ever need to change your Ethereum address, you want to click down on the account button and select global options. This is where you can change your Ethereum address. Okay, so moving on from there, we are just gonna go ahead and move on down to the download and install. So the requirements are gonna be, of course, a mining rig with NVIDIA or AMD GPUs, a seven gig hard drive, that can be a hard drive, a solid state drive, an NVMe or a pen drive, I highly recommend a pen drive, something like this right here. And that is going to make life a lot better for you, in my humble opinion, especially if you want to use this to dual boot to, which is something we can talk about near the end of the video. And then you will need internet with DHCP in your LAN network, and that most likely is already functioning. One of the things to note here is that it does support Wi-Fi. I'm not gonna go over Wi-Fi settings with you guys today, but we can go over that in another separate video if you need a how-to for that specifically. I'm still working on it. So the next thing is obviously you need an account with simplemining.net. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is download the image. Now you can download the image for these specific GPUs right here. And I'm going to be doing it on the test bench just to make it easier for myself. The process will be the same. And that means for me, I'm going to go ahead and download the beta uh, for, of course, the 6000 series right here. We're going to go ahead and click download. It'll take you to a mega download site. And then you will need to just download the image. While the image is downloading, you probably also want to go ahead and get the software to flash the USB drive. So that will be using Etcher today. And so we are gonna go ahead and this will be linked in the description as well. We're gonna click download for Windows. Now due to the storms, my internet's been super slow. So I'm gonna go ahead and have to wait here for like an hour and then we will continue the video. Okay, so now that we have the image downloaded as well as Etcher, we're gonna go ahead and install Etcher. And now that it is installed, we are going to insert our USB drive into the PC. We are going to click flash from file and we are going to select the downloads folder and select the image we just downloaded. And we're gonna click select target. We're gonna select our flash drive right here and click select. And then we are going to click flash. You may get a prompt for UAC. You can click yes to continue. And we will be back once it has been flashed. Alrighty, so once it's complete, this is pretty typical. It'll start saying all of these are not available, these locations, which are just partitions on the drive. You want to make sure that you don't allow it to flash anything or reformat it. And then you are going to unplug it from your PC and then plug it back in. It'll do the format, just cancel out of all of these things. This happens on Hive as well nowadays. And then you will have your SMOS config for the D drive. And you will see here you have a config.txt file. 
you want to double click and open that file. And then you want to change the user email to the email address you signed up for Simple Mining with. Click File and Save. Go ahead and close the notepad. And then open it up again to confirm that the email address is input into the notepad. These are the Wi-Fi settings down here. One to enable and then you can set your Wi-Fi network name and your Wi-Fi network password. We can cover that in more detail in another video if you guys need assistance. At this point, the drive is ready to go. In my particular case, we're gonna be using it on the same rig that we are currently creating the drive on because that is the test bench. And we'll kind of go over some bio settings and so forth so you guys can get an idea on that. But before I do that, I do need to go ahead and get logged in on the other PC with these options. Okay, so at this point, you wanna take the USB drive that you've created Hopefully it looks something like this and you want to plug it into the rig that you want to mine on. Now before we do that, what I want to do is reboot this system and show you guys some of the settings I have in the BIOS. So let's do that. Okay, so now that we're in the BIOS, we're going to go ahead and go through some of the settings. So first of all, what you'll want to do is go into your boot properties and disable CSM. And once you have disabled CSM, it should allow you to enable above 4G decoding. This is a 5000 series motherboard, so we are going to go ahead and enable the resize bar support. This is for smart access memory in case you were curious. Now, another one you would want to do if you have an integrated GPU is to come in and set your integrated GPU as default for your onboard devices. This particular one does not have an iGPU. And then finally, if you're on a gaming rig, another quick setting that you can go ahead and change is your boot option order. And you can set the USB as your primary and then your Windows Boot Manager as your secondary. What that allows you to do is, you see we have it configured here, is when I'm done gaming for the day, I can plug in the USB drive and I can bounce the rig and it'll automatically boot and start mining. That's something I really enjoy doing and something I recommend if you use any sort of Windows PC for mining. It can also help just protect against other issues that could happen with Windows mining and avoids having to turn off your antivirus, et cetera, in Windows. So at this point, we're gonna save and exit. And if configured properly here, it should boot into Simple Mining OS, which is essentially Ubuntu. So essentially this was set earlier to the other USB I had configured. So I just had to come in and make sure it was on the Memrix. We're going to save changes and exit and it should boot to the USB drive into Ubuntu. All right, so there we go. It is booting in and it'll go through the boot process. If you need to enter your email here because it wasn't set up in the config file, you can do that. Otherwise, it'll connect directly to your dashboard. So let's now go into our dashboard. Alrighty, so now in the dashboard, you have a few things that you want to configure before it will boot to the proper Minor, and the first thing is going to be going into your group configs and here you have a default one and you can see here that if we click the minor settings you can change your pool here if you like it's by default set to ethermine.org your wallet is what we already set and the rig name will be the rig name when it boots and is put into rig list where you can also change the name you can do any other minor options here, just like you would do in a batch file on Windows, etc. And then you can click save. Okay, so now that you have confirmed that the drive will go ahead and boot into Ubuntu, it's time to get it added into Simple Mining OS. What you're going to want to do is click the rig list, and then you're going to want to click adding add rigs, and then allow rigs to be added to this account for 120 minutes. At this point, you're going to want to go ahead and go back and reboot the rig and confirm that it connects. Alrighty, so after the reboot, it has gone ahead and picked up all the configuration changes. Sometimes it might download some updates or some miners and so on. You'll just have to be patient and wait through it. And then let's go ahead and go back to the config. Okay, so you can see here that we have our rig set up. 
we can set overclocking here. So you can set your core megahertz, your memory megahertz, your undervolt and so on and so forth. Other options that you can do is go ahead and set up a group overclock. If you click group overclock and say add new, you can go ahead and select the AMD or Nvidia depending on the GPU. And then you can set the name. In this case, we're gonna do RX 6000. You can set the core overclock, the memory overclock, the core undervolt. I'm just gonna go with 750 right now. These will go down a little bit lower. And then we can go ahead and click add. At this point, we can go back to our rig list. We can select the rig and we can say action and group overclock link, select the group and click reload. At this point, it'll send the command to apply the overclock to the GPUs. Now there's even more options to go ahead and review and you can click the information button and it'll bring up a detailed report, including the GPU and its current clocks, the hash rate of the GPU, the estimated power consumption, and of course the temperature in degrees Celsius and the fan speed. You'll have your config and overclock information over here. Basically it'll tell you which config it's applied to and then you know which overclock you have set. And then it will show your IP, your private. If you want to show your public, you can click show public or show IP and it'll show the public IP. And then it will give you a little console down here so you don't even need to have anything plugged into your mining rigs to see the console as it runs through and continues mining. Finally, I wanted to go over selecting additional groups or group configs and creating additional ones. You can go to the group config tab and click add group. And from this point, you can select various different miners and select their settings or even multiple versions and so on and so forth. So, you know, if you want to mine something different outside of, of course, just Ethereum, you can go ahead and do that as well. But as this video covers primarily Ethereum right now, let's go ahead and set one up. Let's go ahead and give an option for Team Red Miner. We're gonna go ahead and click Use. You would put the name in up here, the description, and then of course, the miner is already selected because we selected that. And then here you would set, of course, the pool. And then from here, if you have a miner that doesn't work off of the switches for your wallet address, you will have to manually input your wallet address right here. So keep that in mind. It's really miner dependent. Alrighty, so that was a big one. I hope we covered about as much as we could and you guys have a better understanding of how to install and run Simple Mining OS. I would highly recommend learning to do it for a dual boot system as well on your gaming PC if you're mining Ethereum just to keep your antivirus in order on your Windows 10 install. That's a really good option that I recommend. Once again, I want to go ahead and you can hear it spinning up and mining over here. But once again, I want to go ahead and thank Simple Mining for this opportunity to make this video. If you guys have any questions or concerns, you can always hit the Discord slash support button within Simple Mining dashboard and they will go ahead and get you taken care of and sorted. And I will see you next Tuesday.